Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And we're going to talk about something we haven't talked about in a while, which is uh, Netflix's live action One Piece. Mm -hmm. I think I kind of forgot about it. I uh, didn't because I keep seeing it pop up, but yeah. So apparently, apparently people working on the show, the executive producer, uh, Marty Adelstein, said that they looked at Cowboy Bebop as, as what not to do. What yes. not to do. <laughs> And they decided to basically just do the opposite of what didn't work with Cowboy Bebop. Uh, so that's that's pretty interesting. We're gonna we're gonna talk about this and early reactions to the screeners. I guess people said the show's actually not bad. I don't know the trailer. I, I think it looks pretty good. I, I mean, mean, to me, I'm not like a huge in depth One Piece fan, but I have watched enough of it to know that I thought I thought it looked pretty fun. They got Luffy right, which which was going to be really hard to do, to do, right? And and so I, I don't know. They're not really showing much in the trailer. At least the trailer I saw didn't show a whole lot. But it does seem like they got the characterization mostly right, which was a far cry from Cowboy Bebop. Right, and the actors know. aren't out there saying stupid stuff. No, actually, they're not saying anything. I think that's why I kind of forgot this existed because they're not out there running at the mouth. So and maybe that was part of it. And you do see them you know? say stuff, they had a special work behind the scenes and they were talking and it was all positive stuff. Like it was, they were all talking about how much they liked the original and all that. And they weren't saying like, oh, thank God we fixed her now. <sighs> You know, kind of thing. They weren't doing that at yeah, all. Yeah, it's like, oh, thank God. You know, you expect me to wear like a thong? It was like, about the how hell? they were going to try to embody the character, not they were going to change the character to body, embody them. Yeah. yeah. So there does seem to be an embracing of the source material versus a disdain for the source material. We'll talk about this. Uh, before you get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture, news, views, and rants, guys. If you do, you'll get a woohoo. Woo uh, Got to give a hat tip to Bounding in the Comics that put this together. Uh, again, I haven't really been paying much attention to One Piece because I'm like, oh, God, it's another Netflix live action adaptation. Mm -hmm. We know how that goes. And, of course, you know, looking at Cowboy Bebop, it was canceled within like a week or two of dropping yeah, on Netflix. Yeah, it was just days, I think. It was fast. And it, it actually did make their top ten shows, but probably for the wrong reasons. I think people watched the first episode or two and then tuned out. I actually watched the first two episodes and is uh, pretty much as soon as – Faye showed up. I'm like, oh god, this is this is getting yeah, too painful. Yeah, you didn't hate it until then. No, actually, um, you know, actually, the the first episode until she showed up, it wasn't terrible. I was like, it's kind of corny, it's kind of uh, Tarantino esque, but it's not bad. It's not the worst thing I've ever seen. And then once she showed up, I'm like, oh god, it's all downhill from there. And then skip to the end, and Ed showed up, and I'm like, please kill this show because I cannot watch an entire season of this kid. Yeah. There's no way in hell I can watch watch this. So anyway, they learned a lot of lessons. They gagged their... So, they're, so they say. We won't know so yet. So they say. Proof is in the pudding. We won't know yet. And uh, we'll talk about the, the early reviews. So the executive producer, Marty uh, Adelstein, has revealed that most um, the most important lesson he and his studio learned from producing the streaming giant's live-action Cowboy Bebop abomination was, as audiences have been telling Hollywood for the past decade, that all fans want from any adaptation is source material accuracy. Yeah, or just like not hate loathing it would be helpful. Yeah, it doesn't have to be. I mean, that's the thing too. Like it doesn't have to be 100% faithful to the cartoon or 100% faithful to the video game, but you have to see that there were good intentions there. Yeah. That they at least like the source material. Maybe they change some stuff to work in live action better. Maybe they change it to, you know, speed up the story or, you know, maybe something doesn't work, whatever, but you can see the love of the source material. And all you get from a lot of these, these adaptations is loathing. I mean, look at the Witcher. That's like a prime example. Like they loathe the source material. Mm -hmm. So they change everything just I, I because they could, Shira, but you know, <laughs> Shira, <laughs> they basically turned it into a, so here's the, the thing about, and we've said this before about Shira for all of you Shira stands that are still hate watching our channel. If it were called something else mm -hmm. and not Shira, it would have been fine. But they basically took the Shira IP and changed it so much that it wasn't even right Shira anymore. You know, it's like they took all the dwarves out of it. And, mm -hmm. Basically, you know. yes. So Alstein, who served as an EP on both anime adaptations and whose Tomorrow Studios produced them, so same, oh no, same, same oh, oh god, no. opened up about his current mindset during. A uh, interview given to Variety, reflecting on the total and absolute failure that was Cowboy Bebop, he said, "What we learned is that the fans are expecting you to be true to the source material." <laughs> no, shit. What? 
Right. What? No. Is he in charge of the Witcher? Because you need uh, to like fire everybody and start over. <laughs> you know, two years ago, they, they, his comment would have been, what we learned was fans are just misogynistic, racist, istophobic assholes. And right. they're all horrible people who are incels live in their mom's basement. And they're all men. And they're all straight. Because, yeah, right. you know. As we read the comments in response to Cowboy Bebop, it was always, well, they didn't do this character the same and that, he explained. It really taught us a lot of what we needed to do with this one. Why th- th- would be like, why the hell do you even have the rights to a property if you're not going to do it justice? You know? okay. That is the question, is it not? I mean, that's the way it's been for uh, several years now. Oh, God. According to studio president Becky Clements, after facing the cold, hard truth that they're hubris in attempting to <laughs> western Western westernize, Cowboy Bebop was responsible for the series' abysmal reception. It became everyone's goal to make sure that when you looked at One Piece, you thought it was a live-action version of the manga, and it just felt like another feather in the legacy of Oda. And Oda was directly involved in this one, too, so he probably was like, yeah, you're not going to go nuts with this. That people just need to get to see another genre, but they have the same reaction feeling toward the narrative. <laughs> what oh a concept! Wow! I'm the, I mean, you just sit there like, how, why did it take you so long to figure this out? Like, I mean, I don't understand how this is hard. This is just common sense. Yeah, it said some elements of the series admittedly give off cosplayers recreating their favorite scenes yeah, for Yeah, but YouTube. some of the characters are going to be harder to, to, to translate, you know? One Piece is... Look, of all the anime that you could adapt, when you you start getting into stuff like One Piece and Dragon Ball and where you've got these really like fantastic character designs and like like lots of non-human characters, it, it's going to get harder and harder mm. to 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 adapt that, right? Like if you just had like a romance comic or something, that would be pretty easy to adapt. But this stuff is like, you know, Kind of crazy, but yeah, I said so far a lot of the scenes match one to one with the original yeah. manga. Um, another factor is that they work closely with the original creator, Oda, who is adamant that he has final say in any and all production decisions. Probably because he saw what happened with Cowboy Bebop and he's like, hell no. That's probably it. Uh, and he's been trying to assure fans it was going to be okay for a while now. And I, I was like, of course he's saying that, but compare this to. Cowboy Bebop, where the the creator wasn't involved at all. It was like, here you go, just go do it. And uh, it showed for sure. Anyway, the initial reactions are pretty okay. Uh, It does look a little cosplay-ish. But I mean, again, these are are hard characters to adapt in live action, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, so far, the the reactions are pretty good. This is coming from the direct... Uh, Megan Peters from comicbook.com. She's the uh, anime writer over there. She's usually pretty, pretty solid, right? She said season one, she has watched it several times now. It's good. Good. The news is out. I've seen Netflix's one piece. And while I cannot say much, I can say this before all my coverage goes live. I've watched season one several times now. It's good. Good. I'm hoping so. Not just competent, but like good. It was a good show. Crunchyroll's Daniel Dockery, Crunchyroll, I don't know, if, you know, it's kind of hard to take them seriously sometimes. He also remained fairly tight lipped, calling the series good as well. I can't say much, I'll be writing about it later, but I've seen the live action One Piece in its entirety, and it's, uh, and y'all, y'all, it's good. Mo Hoosin of the streamer said it's the real deal. It's the king of the Netflix shows. I've seen all eight episodes. They didn't just give him like two episodes and say, here, what do you think? Give them all, all eight episodes, eight whole episodes and having minimal exposure to the, oh, having minimal exposure to the source material. See, that's the thing too. Majority of normies are going to have minimum exposure to the source material. Right. Um, I can say that this is the show fans of live action manga and or anime adaptations have wanted. This is the real deal. Um, I'm hoping so because I, I want it to be good. Like, I mean, people are like, you actually want things to fail. It's like, no. I want good things to succeed. <laughs> I want bad things to fail. This one, though, I love this. Uh, comicbook.com's Evan Valentine took a shot at some of Netflix's other anime adaptations, opining, this is not Cowboy Bebop. Cannot stress that yeah. enough. So we'll see. We'll see. Uh, I, what I've seen of it, um, and I was like, I, I don't know. I, I And like I said, again, I'm, I'm not one of the diehard fans that are out there. I could be if I had time to watch it because it's really good. Um. But what I've seen of it, and I have seen some of the original show, it, it, it looked pretty good to me. 
Yeah, it didn't look it didn't look terrible, but I mean, my my reaction because I didn't see a lot in that first trailer was it looks like a bunch of cosplayers. It does. I mean, like I said, it, 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 the problem is when it comes to this, how else are they going to look? Yeah. You know, because yeah. they're going to be doing they're doing live action adaptation. It's going to come across that way no matter what. Right, Some right. of the characters, they, I know people were like talking about they weren't as hulking and, you know, as they yeah. were. And it's going to be kind of hard to do that uh, without making it look too fakey. But um, I don't know what I saw of it looked pretty, pretty good to me. So we'll see. I mean, they've done anime and manga in live action correctly before. I mean, we got Battle Angel. Mm -hmm. Alita was pretty close. I mean, it was pretty much one to one with the OVA. And we had uh, uh, Speed Racer. I like Speed Racer. I thought Speed Racer was pretty good. They deviated. He does like Speed they deviated uh, quite a bit from the show, but I, I the visuals of it actually, I think it worked. But that's really not well. a good example of you know staying true to the show. No, but that's the, that. Well, that is the case. Okay, Speed Racer. He does is love a, Speed Racer. Speed Racer is a case. It's actually my favorite Wachowski movie. Um, not that they did a whole lot of movies, but I like it more than Matrix. I can watch it more often than Matrix. Right. So. That's a, a case of where they took the source material. They obviously loved the source mm -hmm. material, but they added elements to it and fleshed that it worked. out more. That worked. And it worked within that that movie. That's my personal opinion. But anyway. You can anyway. disagree, and if they do, I'm sure you'll hear about it. Well, that's okay, because J.J. Abrams is going to ruin Speed Racer for Apple. I guess oh he's going to ruin it. They're not letting him do that, are they? Yeah, they are letting him do it. Yeah. As long as they don't let Taika Waititi near Kira, we're still good. Oh my God, that's like the like I would let J.J. Abrams touch Akira before I'd let Taika Waititi. Yeah, <laughs> I know that's saying something. <laughs> All right. Um, anyway, are we gonna wrap this up? Yep. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later. Bye. Help support the channel. Go to thereef.support and get early access to podcasts, videos, and other content. That's the reef.support.